Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a basic fireball tutorial updated version of it. Um, I made the first, I dropped the first one, I think it was July, it either was July or August. But I know it's been a minute, I updated it. Uh, still the same, use the same animation sound effects, but I definitely changed up the attack to generally make it better. I'm doing like a kind of just going through, going through like my old videos when I started doing like all the combat videos. Pretty much when my channel started taking off, really. When I started doing all the combat videos and stuff, I plan to go and update all of them and stuff like that. This is part two. This is like the second video I'm doing where like I'm updating. The first one was Hollow Purple and stuff, which is dropping tomorrow. But by the time you guys watch this video, it's already out. But anyway so yeah i updated it and stuff let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so first things first you guys already know you're gonna need a combat you're gonna need a com sorry combat you're gonna need a rig to test an npc to test you know to make sure the attack is working so go up here click avatar click rig builder and insert a block avatar it doesn't I mean, well i mean it doesn't really matter which one you choose but yeah i'm just go with block avatar right and then we're gonna need a remote event of course let's go ahead and head on over to replicated storage let's click the plus icon and let's look for a remote event if you don't see it type remote event then insert a remote event. Then we're gonna re want to rename this to combat event, right? Then we are going to want to head on over to server storage. We're going to need to have our fire bottle, sorry, fire bottle, our fireball, uh, you know, fireball attack. I will have a link to this. Uh, yeah, this is the only effect, yeah. I will have a link to this in the description, the VFX and stuff like that. You guys can download it and then just take the, uh, Part, it, the part isn't named fireball, so you're going to have to go through each. It's only like four things inside the model. But yeah, you're going to have to go through like four, four of the assets until you find this one. So once you find it, you want to rename it to fireball. Um, I'll show you guys the properties just in case. I mean, I don't believe I changed any properties. But yeah, those are the properties. And inside the fireball, you know, we have the attachment with the glow. Then we have all the our particle emitters, right? So yeah. And then it looks like really nice, you know, when it's moving it's moving because you know boom that's the great that's the great thing about particle emitters like you don't even have to script like a trailer or anything it just you know just there it just goes but anyway so once you have your fireball you can go ahead and put it inside a server storage right then in sound service we have our sound um i literally just went to the i believe i went to the toolbox and just typed fireball and just got a sound here's what it sounds like yeah there we go and yeah let's go ahead and get straight into the scripting okay so let's head on over to starter player starter player scripts insert a local script we're going to want to name this script combat script and in parentheses put local then we're going to delete print hello world then we're going to make three variables first things first we're going to get the user input service let's do local uis is equal to game get service user input service then let's get the fireball remote event so local fireball event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child combat event then i'm going to get the local players so local player is equal to game dot players dot local player then we're going to set up the function so let's do uis dot input began connect function in parentheses put input comma processed enter then we're going to say if input that user input type is equal to nm the user input type dot keyboard and cross oh sorry and processed is equal to false then if input dot key code is equal to nm dot key code dot e you guys already know i always go with e but you guys can go with whatever keybind you want so uh, i'm gonna go with the e keybind enter and then i'm going to get the end position of the player's mouse so i'm going to say local end position because this is a mouse guided attack i don't you actually yeah that yeah that would even make sense when when i don't even think it is a fireball attack that isn't mouse guided but yeah so in position is equal to player get mouse dot hit dot position then we're going to fire their mode event so fireball event fire server we need to clarify which attack it is so let's we're in, in quotation marks we're going to put fireball then comma and we're going to send over the player's uh end position right then we are going to head on over to service script service Inside of server script service, we're going, to, we're going to want to insert a server script. And then um, you guys are going to need, of course, your fireball animation. So you can simply just click the plus icon inside of the script, type animation, insert an animation, right? You want to name set animation, fireball animation, throw your animation ID in there. Um, you guys can, um, should I? I mean, the issue with, the thing is with trying to get like all this stuff is that like, the mod like the stuff i'm using aside like i just got this like i was using a different i just made my i made my fireball the first time i made that myself this is something i got from the toolbox 
the animation I got was six is from like six months ago, so I don't really remember where I got that from. But anyway, just literally just type fireball animation in the toolbox, you'll find an animation, right? Throw your animation ID in there, name it fireball animation, then put it inside of the script, service group to be exact. Then we're going to rename the service script to combat script in parentheses put server. Then we're going to delete print hello world. We're going to make actually a good amount of variables. And actually, I'm going to show you guys something. I, if you see my other videos, which most I would say a good amount if you have, um, I've started doing the tables uh, differently uh, when it comes to combat. Because I, I actually, uh, I honestly, I was kind of doing it like the, to me, in my opinion, I was doing it the wrong way. But I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. First things first, we're going to get the twin service. So local TS is equal to game, get service. Twin service, then I'm going to get the sound service, local SS is equal to game, get service, sound service, then I'm going to get the debris service, local DS equal to game, get service, the breeze, then I'm going to get the combat. I mean sorry, combat. I'm gonna get the combat event. So local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. And then lastly, I'm going to create a table local. I know you guys are used to seeing can attack, but the difference is this time I'm going to put can't attack, right? It's going to do the vice versa. It's going to do you know, vice versa because I realized like it made it kind of stupid because it was like it made it so like an attack really could only hit one player. Well, well, actually, when I really think about it, an attack like this really should only be able to hit one player. But the point is, depending on the attack, it didn't really make all that much sense to limit it to like just hitting one player and stuff right the way i've set it up now is so that is so that uh what's it called M like a player can be attacked multiple times because like it'll add their name then it'll remove it like after 0.1 of a second so i guess unless they attacked at like the same time then like that's the only rule scenario i can imagine but anyway i'm going to say can attack is equal to special brackets you know that's how we create a table then i'm going to set up the function i'm going to say i'm going to say sorry i keep thinking because you guys know i used to name the remote events after the name of like whatever the video was like i usually do fireball event that's why i keep accidentally typing fireball anyway combat event that on server events connect function in parentheses put plr which is short for the player then event type and lastly arg one short for argument number one then enter and i'm going to create a variable for the player's character local character is equal to player dot character then i'm going to set up an if statement if event type is equal to quotation marks fireball because you know that is the name of the event right then i'm going to create a variable for the animation track we're going to start playing the animation so local at is equal to character dot humanoid load animation and we're going to say script regular brackets quotation marks get your animation so fireball animation then at play boom then i'm going to say task that wait 1.3 seconds i want to clarify something here right Depending on the animation you're using, you're gonna to need to change this. The reason that it, like we're waiting like almost one and a half seconds is because the animation is kind of like it's like the animation is similar to like a baseball, like like someone throwing a baseball, like someone winding up to throw a baseball. Because it's literally just like a it's like a wind up before you throw it. That's why it's it's one and a half seconds. So depending on what type of animation you're using, um, that would determine uh, however long this uh, you know the wait duration needs to be. And then I'm gonna clone over the fireball. I'm gonna say look fireball clone is equal to game dot service storage dot fireball and then i'm going to clone it over then i'm going to say fireball clone pivot to character dot right hand dot c frame once again i want to mention something my animation is uh is where the player is throwing out the right hand if yours is throwing out the left hand then you want to do then you want to do the left hand then you would do left hand and i also want to clarify another thing the animation I'm using is R6. If you're using an R15 animation, you would need to change this. Like, it can't be character dot right hand because that's not. Wait. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. what I said. Ignore, I know what I said. I'm using R15, I believe, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. I think I said that wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm using R15. Okay, so let me rephrase what I said. Okay, so if you're using R15, you're fine. You just do right hand or left hand. Now, if you're using R6, right? Like you have an R6 animation, then you need to change this to either right arm or left arm. There is no right hand, left hand with R6. So yeah. Then I'm going to parent it to the workspace. So I'm gonna oh, I don't know what happened there. But I'm gonna say fireball clone dot parent is equal to workspace. Then I'm going to create the fireball tween. So I'm gonna say local fireball tween 
is equal to ts create for the instance you know or fireball clone comma tween info dot new then we are going to put the duration here and i actually now that i actually mentioned it i actually forgot to um, i actually forgot to uh, do all that do all that stuff let's go let's go up here right we're gonna put a little space in between we're going to get the player start position or yeah the start position i should say of like where the fireball is starting so fireball start position is equal to character dot right hand dot position remember what i said when i was just talking about you know the c frame of the fireball then you guys already know the end position is just simply argument number one because that's uh the mouse position then to set the duration we do duration is equal to parentheses and position minus start position then on the outside you're going to want to say dot magnitude then divided by 60 you guys can play around with the number to get whatever you want but yeah so once you set that up we're going to go we're going to go back down here and throw the duration in, in there then for the easing style i went with cubic right you could either go with cubic or quad i'd recommend either one of those two then i'm going to say enum dot easing direction of course is out then go in between the parentheses put a comma special brackets to create the property table and i'm going to say position is equal to end position then i'm going to play said tween fireball tween play right then i'm going to play the sound effects so sound service fireball play right then i'm going to use the debris service to add item so add item for the instance it's going to be the fireball clone so we can destroy it i'm going to say duration so that you know when the fireball has when the duration has ended when it's like you know reach its destination then um it will be destroyed then i'm going to say fireball clone oh sorry that touched connect function in parentheses put hit right then i'm going to say enter i'm going to say if hit that parent find first child humanoid and not table that find can't attack then uh oh sorry not character then hit that parent that name and then we're going to create a variable for the enemy character so we're going to say local enemy character is equal to hit that parent right because we confirmed that it is indeed in Either, it's either an enemy NPC or an enemy player, and then I'm also going to insert the player's name to the table. So table dot insert can't attack enemy character dot name right. Then I'm going to you know of course uh decrease the player's health. I'm just going down a little bit because yeah I'm just going down. So I'm going to take away the player's health. So I'm going to say enemy character dot humanoid that health less than equal to ten. And then I'm going to set up this like queen like damage it's kind of like a damage effect uh, i've only honestly used this i think once or maybe twice i've only used it once but i know i used it in my combat video like if you saw my combat video back in july then yeah you remember the little red effect so yeah kind of like when you get hit with a sword in bed wars if you guys know what i'm talking about but yeah so i'm gonna use a four i look i'm gonna say four i comma v and pairs right then i'm gonna say not character enemy make sure you uh you're doing the right one so i'm gonna say enemy character right then I'm going to say get children, enter. Then I'm going to say if V is a mesh part. I'm looking out for both R6 and R15 here. So I'm going to say or V is a regular part. Then I'm going to say I'm going to set up the tween. So this is the second tween. So we can just copy and paste this. So just control C, control V. You could just call this damage tween. Right? Just call it damage tween. And then of course for the instance you're gonna put v for tween info um no duration we're going to set this manually so 0 0.4 seconds for the easing style i went with exponential linear also works uh, i say decently well then we're going to leave out um we're changing the color and transparency so i'm going to say color is equal to color three dot new of course going with a red so one comma zero comma zero and go Go on the outside, I'm going to say comma. Then next, I'm changing the transparency. So transparency is equal to 0 0.5, you know. And then the damage screen is going to play. Then you want to copy and paste so far I loop to save ourselves some time. So control C, you want to skip a line and then control V. Now in between, you want to, of course, put a weight because if you don't, then it's going to it's going to happen so fast, you're not going to notice the difference. So you're going to say cast that weight 0 0.1 seconds. Right, so that it gives the effect of damage, but of course, we're going, to, we're going to change some things. So, leave the easing style, of course, change this to in color. We're going back to gray, so all of these 
change to 0 0.6. Oh, did not mean to do that. 0, so 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. Transparency changes back to 0. Right, we'll send transparency back to 0. And then, like, like I said, we're playing the tween. And just like that, guys, we are done. Yeah, honestly, very simple. Let me go ahead and test this. I was thinking about adding a knot back because that would kind of add a burning effect. But, I mean, if you guys want me to add that into the next one, so you guys know how to make a burning effect, then I got y'all for sure. But anyway, let's go ahead and test this out make sure everything works. So if I press C, you guys see my animation wind up. Okay. It seems working good, but I, trans I spelled transparency wrong. Make sure you spelled it right. So, trans... Oh, I spelled... Bro, how did I spell, I spell it wrong both times? Transparency. Okay, there we go. Right? But yeah, every, aside from that, it seems to work. It seems to work. Just a little damage twin. But yeah, so as you guys can see, the wind up, boom, the fireball. Then, you know, it makes them red. And it gives it a little, little damage effect. Wait. Wait, why isn't it working? Fireball. Wait. Wait, why is it? Well, actually, why isn't it working? And not test not wait. Oh, oh, sorry guys, sorry guys. <laughs> I actually forgot. I actually did forget something. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot something. Okay. So, ooh, that's actually. Oh, I just realized this. I don't even get to include that. I just realized that. Okay. So here, so we're waiting zero point one seconds. So it actually just coincidentally just uh, works out the fact that I was doing a. a that I'm doing a damage effect that like I have to wait zero point one seconds. So here's what we need to do. So remember how we inserted the name to the onto the table, which means they can't be attacked anymore. So simply we just gotta do table dot remove right here, right after the wait. So table so table dot remove can't attack. Then table dot find can't attack. Uh, sorry, enemy character that name. And then just I like putting spaces in between with the weights. So I just know. But anyway, okay, there we go. I was like, I was encountering the issue before, but like, it was for a different reason. There we um, uh, oh, 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 oh my god, I'm so glad I tested. I am so glad I tested this. Okay, I actually forgot this. We also need to double check to make sure the players that we're not attacking ourselves. So let's also do and hit that parent that name nil equal to player that name. I'm so glad that I actually did that. Not, I'm so glad it, I'm just, this is why, yeah, this is why I started testing, I, like, after I make something, not just to demonstrate, but also to double check, okay, it was kind of, oh, well, I guess it was the first time, but anyway, you guys see we're doing damage, you see the effect, boom, so yeah, that's how you make a basic fireball attack, um, yeah, let me know what, it, what any other videos you guys want updated, if you enjoy, leave like and subscribe, as always, if you want access to the script, the script, and to this script, and my other scripts and models, you guys can, uh, become either a channel member or a discord subscriber links to either one of those options you found in the description thank you guys for watching and yeah, i'll see you guys in the next video